ಈಷದೇವೋ ವಿಶ್ವಕರ್ಮ ಮಹಾತ್ಮ ಸದಾ ಜನಾ ಹೃದಯ ಸನ್ನಿವಿಷ್ಟ ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 this mantra i explained yesterday quite in detail i will just recapitulate the principal points there it is a completely revolutionary definition of purna generally whatever we ha- understand by purna whether it is full or complete or infinitude all these we think in terms of something we are knowing as which is different from us the purnatva we think of the even the space infinite that space i am doing or it is a concept in my mind so there is a difference in this mantra or entire upanishad by purna we mean the non dual purna where that subject object difference is not there when we know the atma which is the same as the brahman when we say atma it is our real identity when we say brahman it is the substratum of the entire universe as actually there is no difference at all the whole universe is appearing in the atma and this atma is not different for different bodies it is only one even saying one is wrong it is transcendental atma because when we say one again we are thinking something objective so the first part is to understand what is this purna and then the other point is that when something is purna means it is not in the objective means it is beyond causality beyond time that means the whole universe created universe is bound by cause and effect chain there something is born it grows and it dies that which is immortal that which is in unchangeable that which is beyond causality that which is beyond time it can only be this atma or brahman which is not to be found anywhere in the objective that means we cannot know it as different from our own identity it can be only known as our own identity it should be kept in mind throughout the purnasya purnamadaya what did i say it is all whatever is appearing also it is just like writing in the air it is all writing the whole universe is written in the consciousness but we miss it because our focus is on small small things we develop raga dvesha we develop clinging for what we like and hatred or intolerance towards what we dislike that prevents us from getting this realization of oneness in which the entire universe of good bad everything all the dualities are manifest so when we are able to realize this oneness this one substratum the purnatva in the manifest universe also that is the purnasya purnamadaya normally the variegated world will never give us the idea of purnatva it is an objective variety when in that variety we are able to realize the oneness that it is all in me it is all in the consciousness the whole universe is in the consciousness so although we are seeing the differences we are knowing the differences but it is all a play of the consciousness alone as in cinema we get involved with it so much on the screen something is happening we are, the whole story we get so much involved that we cry we get annoyed we get angry everything happens but what it is it's just a play of the light when the light is gone everything is gone 
it is like that so mithyatva doesn't mean that they are not there everything is there but we have to understand the validity of it the reality of it, it that is why vivekananda used to use another word from the upanishad which is not mithyatva but atasmin tad buddhi atasmin tad buddhi that means we see things as they are not if we can see things as they are then the whole trouble of our life will be relieved we see things as they are really not atasmin tad buddhi this is the trouble with us so the whole shastrik upanishadic studies they are meant to remove this atasmin tad buddhi so purnasya purnam adaya purnam eva avashishyate when we take that purnatva understand that the whole universe is a display in that in that atma or brahman then everything becomes brahman everything becomes atma we we can revel in that uniformity homogeneity that is the real meaning of samatva discussed in bhagavad gita also samatva is not just remaining poised in success and failure that is the starting point to give the mind the stability with which this realization can have can be had so the real samatva when we see the sama the homogeneity everywhere what is that homogeneity that everything the differences we are seeing they are only a display in the consciousness as in dream you understand in dream even if you see a huge palace or a sea or a criminal everybody is made of your mind the mind substance there there we don't have any dif- dif- uh, difficulty it is like that the whole universe is a display in the consciousness when we understand realize this purnatva purnasya purnamadaya when we absorb this then everything becomes full that purnatva is felt everywhere we don't miss the atma or the brahman anywhere at all this is the meaning of the shanti patha and it is as i said it is upanishadic verse also in the fifth chapter of brihadaranyaka the first verse first mantra is this now we will come to the second chapter section 4 of brihadaranyaka it is called yajna valkya maitreyi samvada that is the conversation between yajna valkya and maitreyi in the handout you will find that at the beginning itself i have taken one mantra from chapter 4 section 5 because this often happens we have to take from here and there to complete the story when in chapter 2 the story starts a little bit is missed there which is available in the fourth chapter section 5 so i have collected that shloka from there a mantra from there and given it here now this yajna valkya is one of the greatest rishis of our country known rishis of our country you can say greatest kavi also is said kavi doesn't mean always poet it means poet but it means kranta darshi who the wise who can see the truth now in yajna valkya's case from the story you will find that he was still in the grihasthashrama and the story starts with the statement that he wants to renounce grihasthashrama and take to sanyasa for completely getting established in jivan mukti now that statement itself will solve many questions you go on asking so we will come to all that first let us know about yajna valka he considered to be a maharshi maharshi what what is the difference between rishi and maharshi generally we refer to maharshi as a knower with a very great dimension so they will not just discuss about the truth in its essential aspect they will deal with all problems of the society all the behavioral problems of different people in different place many sides they take the whole life as a whole they deal with it and give us the advice how to live a proper life as say vyasa maharshi say vyasa deva has written mahabharata so there you we find the highest the greatest dimension of a maharshi like that in upanishadic literature 
Yajna Valka is also considered to be the greatest Maharshi. Even in the story of the Upanishad, you will find that at that time, it is a story which relates to Videha, that means Janaka's, Raja Janaka's country. It should be somewhere in North Bihar, I believe. Uh, now it is called uh, Mithila. Mithila is the place. So, uh, Mithila is the capital of Videha. That Videha, the name itself will strike you. It means it is transcending the Deha. Videha means transcending Deha. We are all caught in the Dehatma Bodha. We are all caught by the body identity. So, Videha means one who has crossed the, transcended the body identity. So, Janaka was the king residing in Videha. This Janaka also was the one of the most famous, we call them Rajarshi. Rajarshi means our kings were rishis also. Satyadrashta, rishi. Without that, the good king was not able to rule the kingdom. Because ruling the kingdom, we may think that, oh, it is great becoming a king of a country. You have so much of luxury, so much of power and all that. For a good king, it is not so at all. It's a putting on a crown of thorn. It's a life of tremendous torture because he has to take decisions. He has to reward, good, reward the good people. He has to punish the bad people. And those days, it was not courts or Supreme Court, High Court, and the case will go on for 10 years, 15 years like that. The report will come. The Raja has to listen to everybody, listen to the ministers, and immediately deliver his judgment. Sometimes it will be a capital punishment. The Raja has to withstand everything. It is like playing the role of God. Our, there is a great saying which says that a real judge is one who gets more pain than the punishment given to the criminal. That is the person who is punished, the amount of pain he bears, the judge who has given the punishment should have greater pain. He should feel greater pain than the punished. I don't know I am clear or not. That the punisher should feel greater pain than the punished. This is the code of, it is uh, when after Draupadi's Vastraharana, when um, what is the lady from Afghanistan? Gandhari. Gandhari. When Gandhari saw from <laughs> from the Alinda from the window, she could know what is happening over there. And finally, after the episode, she came down, and she was giving, trying to give real uh, vichara to Dhritarashtra. In that, she was saying, "That king, do you not know that?" The, a real judge, a, a judge is fit to give a punishment when he feels more pain than the punished. So do you feel the pain of whatever you have ha has happened in this assembly? So, a king has to be of a very, very great dimension. So we find in uh, Yoga Vasishta that many of the kings, they could not withstand the torment of ruling the kingdom. They left. And they went into the forest, looked for solace, and finally got Sam Rishi, who gave him the knowledge. And after getting the knowledge, getting the Samatva Buddhi, he comes back and again rules the kingdom with lot of efficiency and Samatva Buddhi. He becomes very efficient and righteous also. So our real good kings, not like Kamsa and others, we had bad kings also, but the real good kings who are Focus, who are um, extolled in our scriptures, they were all Rajarshis. Our Raghuvam Shada, the lineage of Rama, was famous for having the Rajarshis. Many of his predecessors were Rajarshis. We know of the King Sagara, whose son, who was also a Rajarshi, the Sagara king was a Rajarshi. He was the predecessor of Rama. When his son, Asamanjas, Asamanja. He became so notorious, he was a notorious boy, and people started complaining that he doesn't have 
any human values. He is always doing wrong things. Children playing on the pathway, he takes them and dips them in the water. When they are suffocating, this boy claps and laughs, seeing the child, seeing the baby suffocating. So he takes pleasure in harming others. When Maharaja Sagara came to know of it, immediately he banished his son. This was the real Rajashri's role, that he will be impartial. He will not cling to anybody, even if the person is his son or wife or anybody. So, Janaka was a very noted Rajashri and very much discussed in our scriptures. Even in Mahaparata he is referred. In Bhagavad Gita also Krishna tells Arjuna that even if you do not accept all this, seeing these Rajatshis, you should behave like that. He is taking the example of Janaka. Oh, we say Janaka Adi Maharshi, actually Rajarshi. Janaka is the first person to be referred to in Rajarshis. Now Maharshis are those who are not Rajas, who are not ruling the kingdom, but they are giving the, all the moral codes to, spiritual codes to the world, to the society with a very great dimension. Such people are called Maharshis, like Vyasadeva, Valmiki, then Yajnavalkya also was one like that. So we have Yajnavalkya Smriti also. Smriti means the, that kind, the, in that era, that was the code of conduct. So they are fit to give the code of conduct for the society. They have to be renovated. The society is changing. The truth doesn't change. Our dharma is sanatana dharma because it is based on the truth which never undergoes any change. So, that part is stable. But pivoted on that, the society is changing. The, rishi, the Mahashi and the Rishis, all the spiritual people, their only duty or loka sangraha is to Keep the society always centered on that central truth, Sanatana Dharma. Keeping that, the, all the changes in the society which has to be given from time to time, they will give. That is why we have many smritis. In different era, there were Manusmriti was there, Jajnavalka Smriti was there, Parashara Smriti was there. It depends on the society at that time, the codes will be given. They are changeful. The society, those parameters are changeful. But the codes, the speciality of our country is that all these codes are given from a vision of the truth, which is never changing. The remaining anchored in the truth, unchanging, eternal truth, they will give what are the temporary, the current codes of conduct. So, Yajnavalka was that kind of a Maharshi. And all these, what we are reading about his statements, his stories, etc., these are all written before he took up sannyasa. So you can imagine. Remaining in the household, he had this knowledge to this dimension. And after sannyasa, what happened? We don't have anything. Only the Upanishad says that he is leaving. At the end of it, one, at one point, he says that, saying that he left his household life. Let us read a little and then again I will come back. Lot more things to be said about these things. You see the mantra I have taken from, I am not calling them shloka because there is no meter. But this Yajyavalka was so poetic that although that is what I wanted to tell yesterday, that they may not have the meter, but the expressions are so poetic, it is wonderful. If you can uh, harmonize with it, you will find it is so fulfilling, so illuminating, enlightening, as well as fulfilling. He was a great poet in that sense. The expressions were very poetic, but it is all mostly written in prose form. Athaha. Athaha means this ha is used in various sense here. It is an avyapada, that means indeed sometimes, or Therefore, like that. Atha means there now here. These are all avyaya, that is, they are used as exclamations in various places. 
अथ याज्ञवल्क भारे बभूवत बभूवत अथ याज्ञवल्क्य भारे बभूवत सी देर आर टू याज्ञवल्क हेड टू वाइफ्स द स्टेटमेंट सेज दैट नाउ याज्ञवल्क महर्षि हेड टू वाइफ्स नाउ यू मे इमीडिएटली क्वेश्चन वाई शुड यू हैव टू वाइफ्स एंड ऑल दैट इज वाई द कोड्स ऑफ कंडक्ट आर डिफरेंट फॉर डिफरेंट वाई दिड पंच पांडव हेड वन वाइफ इट इज एक्चुअली वन वाइफ लाइक दैट depending on the situation suppose the kshatriyas they were dying in the war and all so there will be always a deficiency of male in the kshatriya uh, community so they were allowed to marry as many girls as would like to marry him that is those who are fit and is offering to marry him he should accept that was a code he cannot refuse if the girl is proper he should accept so the rajas had many wives that is why now here yajyavalka had two wives because it is two dvivachanam they have used bharye dve bharye otherwise they would have used bharya dve bharye babhuvatu all are corresponding to the two to two maitrayi cha katyay anicha yajyavalka had two wives one was maitreyi another was katyayani these are the names of the wives maitreyi cha katyayani cha tayoh ha tayor ha tayoh ha tayor ha ha tayoh means between them tayoh ha again an exclamation tayor ha मैत्रयी ब्रह्मवादिनी बभूव मैत्रयी ब्रह्मवादिनी बभूव ऑफ द टू मैत्रयी वॉज ब्रह्मवादिनी ब्रह्मवादिनी मीन्स रेवलिंग इन डिस्कशन अबाउट द ट्रूथ अबाउट ब्रह्मन सो मैत्रयी वॉज फॉन्ड ऑफ डिस्कसिंग ब्रह्मन एंड अबाउट स्पिरिचुअलिटी ट्रूथ एट्सेट्रा so here he is using the word brahma vadini means she was fond of discussing about brahman but suppose somebody is a knower then they will say brahma vidushi in later on in brihadaranyaka itself we will find this brihadaranyaka gives so many examples like that yajnavalka was questioned in the sabha in janaka raja sabha by a female knower and a female bhikshuni also there they will say brahma vidushi that means a knower of brahman who is a lady two famous ladies of brihadaranyaka upanishad are maitreyi and gargi so we have yajnavalkya maitreyi sambadah and yajnavalkya gai uh, gargi sambadah both are there that is also very interesting now if i feel we get interested in studying brihadaranyaka I, i have already got interested in the last two days so i am feeling like i should continue intermittently taking all this because while going through i am reading here and there also it is i am getting interested then maitri brahmavadini bahuva stri prajnayiva tarhi katyayani stri prajnayiva stri prajnayiva tarhi katyayani what was katyayani she was having stri prajna you should not feel it is demeaning it means she was interested in the how looking after household managing property and all that she was not it means she was not interested in knowledge so naturally when the husband is very much given to knowledge like yajnavalkya uh if the wife is not interested in knowledge at all there will be a incompleteness or lack of fulfillment but that fulfillment will come from maitri who was a brahmavadini 
and another truth is also there when maitri the upanishad says that she was a brahmavadini we can assume that our spiritual ladies they don't want to do any household work so what will be the nature of the household when somebody becomes too much interested in the truth in the spiritual literature and all she will only like to study and meditate and all that so who will look after the household so jajjavalka was saved very much he had two wives one was looking after the household and another was practicing spirituality that is the ideal situation we often say that i don't know how ramakrishna mission manages the ashram hold by the mail alone because here neither swami ji nor i am fit to manage the ashram unless there had been some ladies some ladies sanyasin or brahmacharini or so managing the ashram hold i think we would, no guest would have been welcome here even if they had come they would get only kanji and something they won't get good food so it needs it is needed we should not think that it is some translation it is a little derogatory way they have put it it is not so that both sides are needed katyani was given to the household matters and maitri was given to discussions on truth ataha stri prajnaiva tarhi katyayani अथ कायानी अथ बिकम्स कायान्यथ अथ याज्ञवल्क अन्यवृत्त उपाकन् सी द लैंग्वेज विल बी अ लिटल डिफिकल्ट हियर बट आई हैव गिवन द अन्वय दट इज स्प्लिट एंड गिवन द मीनिंग इन द नेक्स्ट पेज यू विल फाइंड सो वेन वी रीड दैट यू विल फाइंड दैट इट बिकम्स मोर और लेस लाइक जस्ट प्रोजेक् that is the benefit of studying with the anvaya that is why we have revised the um, uh, handout given so that i found that unless the anvaya is given you will not be able to easily digest it athaha jajyavalkya anyat vrittam upakarishvan so what happened jajyavalka now wanted to take up another mode of life vrittam means another kind of a life anyat vrittam means another kind of a life in another place it the next verse they will say paribrajya he wanted to take to become a paribrajaka so in the anmaya part see in your handout it is written I, uh, have you shown now in the anvaya part we will put the words here and there if you look into the shloka you will find all the words there if it is not there i have put a bracket otherwise you will find the word there but to make it prosaic we have changed the order of the words so now you see only the anvaya otherwise you may get confused atha yajnyavalkasya द्वे भारिये बभूवत हा मैत्रेयी च कायानी चु दिस आई हेव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन तय मैत्रेयी ब्रह्मवादिनी बभूव दिस ऑलसो आई हेव एक्सप्लेन तरह तरह मीन्स ऑन द अदर हैंड तरह ऑन द अदर हैंड that is maitri was brahmavadini but what about katyayani on the other hand katyayani stri prajna eva katyayani was only eva is there that means he was not given to spiritual studies eva is there katyayani was only wise in the duties of the housewife or the household duties we can write katyayani was only efficient in household duties it will be better to write of efficient in the household duties atha yajnyavalkya upakarishvan anyat vrittam ha upakarishvan means he desired for he wanted to have it may not be that much of a desire but he wanted to take up anyat vrittam means adopting another mode of life so the total meaning will be atha means now 
Yajnavalkya was desirous of at adopting another mode of life. That is, he was already a grihastha and in his case, because he was already a knower, remaining in garhastha, he was a knower. He has written all these things. He was not only a knower, he was the greatest knower of that in Janaka Sabha. Janaka was a great appreciator of knowers and uh, scholars and everybody used to come from different, different countries, they used to come to Janaka's palace to meet other knowers, to meet other scholars. It was a great country. So much of appreciation was there for knowledge. It was, we call it the knowledge-based civilization. We cannot even imagine the kind of, the way they were coming and all. You have already heard of Ashtavakra from Swamiji's, Swamiji's lectures. <coughs> that when Ashtavakra was coming, he had lot of bends in his body. So when he was ent entering Janaka's palace, there was a laughter in the palace. So when everybody was laughing, Ashtavakra also laughed. Then Janaka, Janaka also laughed initially, but then when Ashtavakra laughed, that struck Janaka. So after he arrived, Janaka, first question asked that, I understand that, every, why did everybody laugh? Because your body had a peculiar shape. There were eight bends in the body. So your walking must have been very funny. So uh, my sabha, everybody laughed at it. Laughed at you. But I am not able to understand, Ashtavakra, why did you laugh? What was the reason for your laugh? Then Ashtavakra said that, I am coming here. I have heard about, I have heard about Janaka Sabha, which is full of all great pundits, great scholars, knowers and what not. To see them, I have come from a, such a distance. And when I enter, I find that they are even worse than the ordinary people. Seeing my body's eight bands or so my peculiar uh, gait, walking gait. All your Sabha people, they are laughing. That means they are so full. Is this Janaka Rajas, Janaka Maharajas? scholarly sabha, that what are they saying? They are not able to see my, what is inside. They are not looking at the Atma at all. Their focus is only on the body, the grossest part of the being. And seeing that, they also do not know that I have nothing to do about it. I am born like this and they are laughing at me because I am born like this. Of no fault of mine, I have been like this. Then Janaka Raja understood that what is this person? Then the Ashtavakra Samhita starts from there. Janaka Raja questions him and he replies. So Yajnavalka was the greatest knower in that Janaka Raja Sabha. So one day the story, it is in Vyadaranyaka, another chapter. One day Janaka Raja kept uh, thousand and eight cows or so, all decked with gold and diamond and all, very costly gift. And he called the Sabha saying that whoever is the greatest Brahmanya, knower of Brahman, the greatest knower of Brahman, will be given this, these cows, that will be gifted to the greatest knower of Brahman. So the Sabha was full of all kinds of knowers and all, nobody said anything. Janaka Raja said, please tell me who is the greatest. Who will say who is greatest? How will they know who is greatest? Nothing. So after some time, when nobody was coming up, Janaka uh, Yajnavalkya asked his Brahmacharin disciple to, you go and take the cows to my hermitage. Take all the cows to my hermitage. Immediately some people rose up. Said, how can you take it, Yajnavalkya? Raja has kept it for the Best of the knowers, the greatest knower. You, if you have to take it, you have to prove that you have get, you are the greatest knower. Yajnavalkya replied that nobody was asking anything and nobody, I found, found that nobody is interested in the cows at all. I need the cows, so I said that you take the cows. Now if I have to, be, have to prove that I am the greatest knower, you have to ask me questions. I will reply. Then one after another, one was Gargi there, then one was Shakalya also. Like that, one after another people, they 
go on questioning they i mean scholars they question yajya valka on various aspects of spirituality and otherwise also and yajya valka was replying all that when he replied everything then gargi got up and said that i have got two very sharp arrows in my quiver those two arrows means actually two questions if yajya valka you can reply to those two questions then we will all accept that you are the greatest knower so yajya valka said that you first throw your first arrow let me hear so she put the question yajya valka replied then second arrow yajya valka replied then gargi announces that since he has replied these two fully we are all satisfied and he is accepted as the greatest knower then um, shakalya or somebody i have to read again i have forgotten some brahmachari i think he got up and said no i don't accept you have to reply to my question also then yajya valka started replying his question and he takes it to a such a position then finally says that my dear son now what you are asking this reply cannot be given in the sabha like this come we are going somewhere else we let us go somewhere else from this jana sabha come with me we will put our hand in hand and i will tell you you will know and we will come back this question cannot be answered in a open assembly so then everybody accepted him as the so they, this was what yajya valka yajya valka was the greatest knower so called greatest knower of his time in janaka videha rajya now he was still not a sanyasin so he wanted to take up sanyasa what does it mean generally people take to for under becoming knower they take to sanyasa sanyasa they walk off they leave their household they leave their profession they leave everything to fully devote to spirituality taking up sanyasa this is our practice even if they don't take it in the young age after brahmacharya normally the practice was that after garastha life they should become fulfilled enough that is they should first of all learn in brahmacharya they should learn the dharma then based on that dharma they should live they should earn righteously based on that dharma they should live the garhastha life according to the dharma so that by the end of about 50 years or so they become absolutely fulfilled they should leave the family or kingdom to the next generation and walk off either as vanaprastha or as sanyasi depending on his ripeness of the sadhana so they were supposed to take up sanyasa actually when dhritarashtra was not leaving the palace vidura came and he started scolding dhritarashtra saying so many things you don't have shame the people who have killed your 100 sons you are taking food from them and you continue so old you have become why don't you go to the forest finally he sent them to forest vidura gandhari and kunti devi also followed later just behind them vidura also followed they all went to banaprastha now if they are more or less knower in that case they could have taken directly to sanyasa also in our tradition generally we say it's called paramahamsa sanyasin there we have two kinds of sanyasa one is vividisha sanyasa another is called vidvat sanyasa vividisha means janne ki ichha that means the willing will to know so they take up sanyasa to attain knowledge now if it, they remain in garastha there will be so much other disturbances so much of family involvement material involvement vishaya will be there everywhere so they take to a forest life or hermitage life or ashram life nowadays we can call it ashram life also but there is a but there in coming to the ashram they find that it is a still a bigger household than their own household in the household there were only two people or three, four people in the ashram we are 20 50 like that so it's much more involvement 
So that is another thing that how to become a knower passing, coursing through the involvements, work involvement. That is the interactional sadhana as Swamiji says and that is a foolproof sadhana that if you can while in the while surrounded by all kind of involvement when you are able to remain anchored in the soul then that is that attainment will never be lost otherwise if you are secluded in the cave or in the forest and you have lot of experiences also samadhi and other experiences you have but when you come back to the society you will find that society is still difficult for you to live you will find that various raga dvesha are still haunting your mind so coursing through the involvement and getting rid of all the raga dvesha become becoming completely purified that is the safest and when it happens then automatically the person becomes fit for sanyasa so he changes his dress or changes his mode of life and all suppose he was in the garhastha he was in the family then he may leave the family and go to somewhere has his own have his own ashram or he may go and join an ashram also anything can happen depending on the situation depending on his propensities many things are involved there so that is called vidvat sanyasa that means he has already internally he has become a sanyasi like bhagavad gita all the attainments are inner so in his inside he has overcome the sangha and phala kamana both are gone so he does not have anything to gain from the world that is the internal sanyasa when the internal sanyasa he has got established automatically the outer appearance dress the mode of life is changed so i don't think anybody should have question about that can the knowledge be had in the remaining in the household life or is it necessary to take up sanyasa both are yes yes and yes very much necessary that is remaining in the household you can have the knowledge but to have the complete fulfillment jivan mukti and the last the goal of spirituality divinizing life when you become an internally sanyasin you become unfit to stay in a normal household their people will have different other desires so your life will be wasted if you stay in household after becoming an inner sanyasin so either your household have to has to be converted into a sanyasa ashram or you have to walk off join somewhere or go and have your own ashram where spiritually oriented people will feel free to come to you discuss with you take your refuge remaining in the household you cannot fulfill that purpose at all so there should not be any question that why then take sanyasa sanyasa has its greatest role to play in life it is the last order of life and it has its own magnificent glorious role in the society his role is only loka sangrah at the same time never ever question that swami ji we are in the household how can we have this knowledge you can become a full knower remaining in the household also as yajyavalkya had become the question is whether we want it whether we work for it whether we do the sadhana or not in some other place you will find the kind of sadhana yajyavalkya had done he was very very exceptional in all this initially he was very egoistic also all that let us now keep it away so that is how he wanted to now change his order of life and take to the highest order of life the sanyasa so what does he do come to the 2.4.1 <laughs> मैत्रेयीति होवाच होवाच यज्ञवल्क्य मैत्रेयीति मैत्रेयीति होवाच 
Actually, see the words are here and there. You just look down here in the Anvaya. Actually, it is Yajyavalkyaha Uvacha Ha. That is, then Yajyavalka told whom? Maitri. Now, this Are Maitri Iti, that Are we have taken from the next portion. In the another word, Are is added. So all these things we have to do to create the Anvaya. That is why I have done it, so that you find it easy. It is difficult otherwise. In the book, this Anvaya is not generally given, particularly a huge book like Brihadaranyaka. It's difficult to get with the Anvaya. Because the, itself, the book itself will become very voluminous with Shankara Bhashya and all. Generally they will have the Shankara Bhashya. Maitreiti Maitreiti Hovacha Yajnavalkyaha Hovacha Yajnavalkyaha Udhyasyan 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 va Udhyasyan va Are Are Aham asma aham asmat sthana dasmi aham asmat sthana dasmi udyasyan va udyasyan va udyasyan va are udyasyan va are aham asmat aham asmat sthana dasmi sthana dasmi so you come to the, the next half, I will read later. To make it easy, you come here, the Anvaya. Yajna Valkyaha Uvacha Ha Are Maitri Iti Are is a dear, darling, dear, like that, Sambodhana. It's a fond Sambodhana. Are, Hindi Are, but that is different. Here it is, Are is a fond Sambodhana. <laughs> Are Maitri Iti. Iti means like this. So what happened? Yajnavalka had told to whom Maitri, Are Maitri, oh my, my dear Maitri, oh my dear Maitri, Iti, like this. What did he say? What did Yajnavalka say? Hantate, Hantate, Anaya Katyayanya, Anaya Katya Yanya Antam Karabaniti Karabani Iti Karabani Iti Antam Karabani Iti Hantate Hantate Anaya Anaya Katya Yanya Katya Yanya Katya Yanya Katyayanya Antam Karavaniti Antam Karavaniti So go to the second line of the Anvaya. What did Jajavalka told tell tell my three? Aham Asmat Sthanat Udyasyan. Aham Asmat Sthanat Udyasyan Va Asmi. This Va is actually Vai. It is coming as Va because it is followed by Asmi. Aham Asmat Sthanat Udyasvan Udyasvan Va Asmi. Udyasyan. What did I say? Oh, Udyasyan. Aham Asmat Sthanat Udyasyan va asmi. Yajnavalka says that I am leaving this place. Asmat sthanat means from this place. What is he saying? Udyasyan. Yasyan means going. But why is he saying Udyasyan? Whenever there is Ut, means I am going to a higher level somewhere. That means so far I was in the Garastha level. Now I am taking to the higher order of life. I am going to for Paribrajana, I am going for as a Paribrajya, that as a sannyasin, for the higher order of life. This Ut always like that. 
Uth means at a higher level, lofty. Our all festivals are called Uth Sava because our festivals are designed, our traditional festivals are all designed to take our mind to an elevated level. You will find that everywhere there is some kind of puja or some spiritual um, activities are involved in our festivals. Without that, traditionally, we did not have any festival. Even in marriage also we have such rituals which will take our mind up towards the truth, towards the ultimate goal. So that is why all our festivals are called Utsava. It is not that the, our culture has been completely degraded by the Western influence here that we have taken to only drinking and merrymaking, dancing and all, by which we get completely degraded, degenerated. It is not Utsava, it is Adhotsava. Adhotsava. Taking us down and down and down and completely spoiling us. So our Utsavas were not like that. If you remain in so many work throughout the day, you will not be able to think of God or spirituality or anything. So every month we had some, at least one, more than that also sometimes, a few days sometimes. We had Utsava when you will take away your mind from the Vishaya Buddhi and think of something higher in life. So that is why Utyasyan, that I am going to a higher level, higher order of life. Hanta. Hanta can be interpreted as various ways. It is. It can be just as an exclamation or permission that I am asking for permission. Shankaracharya has uh, interpreted it as permission. Because in the household, when anybody, when the wives are living and they are good wives, everything is fine, you should not take to sannyasa without telling the wife. You have to get the permission from the wife. You know of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he was repeatedly asking, his wife was there, mother also was there. And he was repeatedly asking for the God is calling me, the Lord is, Krishna is calling me, Krishna is calling me, I have to go for the world, the world has to be shown, the path, Krishna is calling me, I have to go. But the mother also would not allow, the wife also would not allow. They were not permitting at all. And he was not able to live for a long time like that. Because this permission is necessary for going, taking up sannyasa. That is the principle. I remember something, I have told earlier also, personal uh, here. When we thought of joining the ashram, leaving our profession and household life and all, so at that time, my parents were quite old and earlier our siblings and others, they were there were with them. But that was the time when they were left alone in Jamshedpur. All others had gone for work in, outer, in some other cities and all. So they were becoming a little more dependent because we were quite close to Jamshedpur. I was in IIT Kharagpur and they were in Jamshedpur. So they were coming often. I was also going almost every week or every alternate week or so, something like that, or uh, once in a month. So when I told my mother, father agreed immediately, when I told my mother that the decision about leaving everything and going to the ashram, my mother was a little shocked. Actually, there was nothing to get shocked because earlier, much earlier, 12 years prior to that, previous to that, 12 years before, I had wanted to leave and join, go to Pondicherry and join Aurobindo Ashram. And at that time, both my parents happily agreed. Both father and mother agreed, they were preparing me. The father had a friend there who was one of the trustees of Aurobindo Ashram, so many things happened. But they were fully agreeable to my going to the Aurobindo Ashram. They thought that I will be like that only. But now that 12 years we stayed back and in household life, so-called household life, so their ideas also changed. And she was quite shocked when I said that we are wanting to go. Then after two, three days, I was I had gone to visit them. After two, three days, one day she told me that, why don't you go after my body falls? So I kept quiet. 
and then said that, my dear mother, have you thought about it, what you are saying? That I am wanting to go so much, intensely, I am no, no more I am liking the profession or anything, I want to leave. When my mind is feeling like that, and if you say that you go only after my body falls, then will it be right in my deep in my mind, will I not be waiting when my mother dies, when my mother's body will fall, when my mother's body will fall? If I may not think in that manner, but deep inside that will be there. I am waiting for my mother's body, body to fall. Is it the right situation? Or suppose you happily allow me to go, or rather uh, welcome my decision to go, then by taking up such a noble step, it will be very good for you. I will know that my old parents are there and those thoughts will have lot of beneficial effect on all of you. So, which is right? Should I stay back and think in this manner or should I go and think as for the welfare of everybody? She smilingly said, you go. So, what does he say? Aham asmat sthanat udhyasyan va asmi hanta permit me te anaya katyayanya antam karavani iti Before I leave, I want to divide the property between you and katyayani that is the two wives, I want to divide the property between you and Katyayani. You permit me to do that. And by that what will happen? happen? Between you, I am the interdependence on each other. I am going to remove that interdependence so that you can also become independent. Because I was the link for you two. Now you can become independent. So I am going to divide the property between you and Katyayani. I am going to renounce household life to take to the higher order of life, sannyasa. Permit me. This, that higher order of here is mentioned. The sannyasa is not mentioned here, but it is mentioned in that later chapter. I would therefore like to divide the property between you and Katyayani to end the interdependence between you. Now, what will be the effect on the wife? Katyayani, they have not mentioned anything. Maybe she was very happy that now no more I have to ask my husband for permission for getting a few more uh, utensils or sari or anything like that. I will have my own property, I can enjoy it. She was given to enjoying the Vishaya and all. And Maitri, what she will say? That is written here. Let us see what my tree says. 2.4.2 Saho vacha maitreyi Saho vacha maitreyi Yannu ma iyam bhago ho Yannu ma iyam bhago ho Actually Yannu is coming from Yat Nu Ma is from me or ma. That me ekara will be dropped because it is followed by yam. That when it is followed by e, the ekara will be dropped. This is there in Bhagavad Gita also in some places you will find. It's a common uh, grammatical rule. Bhagavoho means O Bhagavan. He is telling his Lord, O Lord, sa ho vacha. Sa, ha, uvacha. Maitri, sa. Here it is, sa, not sa. Sa, because it is Trilinga. Maitri is Trilinga. So, in Yajyavalkya's case, it is sa, ho, vacha. Here it is sa, ho, vacha. Sa, ho, vacha, maitri. So, now Maitri said, what did she say? 
Yadnuma yam bhagoho sarva prithivi vittena purna syat tena amritas katham tena amritas yamiti yadnu ma yam bhagoho sarva prithivi vittena purna syat katham tena amrita syam iti amrita see that it is long because she is it is feminine Amrita. Otherwise, Amrita, the Akara would not have been there. You see the um, the Anmaya, it will be easy. Sa Maitreyi Uvachaha. That Maitri said, what did she say? Bhagoho, O Lord. Yannu means Yatnu. Yannu Vittena Purna. Iyam sarva prithivi prithivi Yannu vittena purna Iyam sarva prithivi Ma syat Ma syat means me syat <coughs> If the whole earth Full with all its wealth Various wealth Vittena purna Yatnu vittena purna Prithivi also is trilinga So it is vittena purna Not purna Purna prithivi Yannu vittena purna yam sarva prithivi ma syat means me syat katham tena amrita syamiti if you are dividing your little property whatever you have Rajajajavalka was supposed to be a very rich rishi there he had lot of properties but even then it is nothing compared to the whole earth whatever properties are there she said that even if the whole the earth with all its variegated wealth, with different wealth, the glorious wealth belongs to me, becomes mine. By that will I attain immortality? Because Yajyavalka, you are going to attain immortality. You are living for what? For becoming immortal or to have the benefit of immortality what you have realized? They generally refer to as Jivan Mukti Sukha. So actually, saying it Sukha is not really right. It is the ultimate prasada. That is, one may become knower, but unless he is completely dedicated to what he has known, he becomes fully spiritual. He will not have the Jivan Mukti fulfillment. That Sukha will not be there. He will be hindered by his family people, some absolutely poor somebody, dirty somebody, but spiritually he may have some great inquiry. So the knower will be allowing him, but the house people will get very annoyed, seeing that are wo to kaun kaun ke andar leke aate hai, wo to in se abhi muskil ho jayega, aap kahi aur ja ke rahi hai. If the house people are also not oriented to that, to make the household as ashram, there will always be trouble. So they will not have the Jivan Mukti fulfillment. So Yajnavalka, you are leaving the household to attain that. And you are giving me some property with that, will I be able to attain whatever you are attempting? And not only that, as a Stri, as a wife, am I not a Sahadharmini that I should follow what the husband follows? If you consider that to be the greatest aim, the goal of life, should I not consider also that to be my goal of life. So what for you are leaving the household? You tell me before that. You give me the knowledge before you leave. So that I can also attain the same goal. Sa maitreyi uvachaha bhagoho yannu vittena purna yam sarva prithivi ma syat me syat Katham tena amrita syamiti. By that will I be will I be attaining will I attain immortality? Maitri said, O Lord, if the entire earth filled with all the wealth becomes mine, by that will I become immortal. Yajyavalkaha uvacha ha. Yajyavalka replied. Na iti. Neti means na iti. No replied Jajnivalkya. Shall we go to the sloka? Let us see whether we can read. 
साहोवाच मैत्रेयी साहोवाच मैत्रे साहोवाच मैत्रेयी साहोवाच मैत्रेयी यन्नुम इयं भगो यन्नुम इयं भगो सर्वा पृथ्वी वित्तेन पूर्णा स्यात् सर्वा पृथ्वी वित्तेन पूर्णा स्यात् कथं तेना मृता स्यामिति कथं तेना मृता स्यामिति नेती हो वाच याज्ञवल्क नेती हो वाच याज्ञवल्क यथवोपकर्णवता 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 जीवित जीवित यथवोपकर्णवता जीवित यथवोपकर्णवता जीवित तथव ते जीवित सैत तथव ते जीवित सैत तथव ते जीवित सैत तथव ते जीवित सैत अमृतत्व अमृतत्व तु नाशास्ति तु नाशास्ति वित्तेनेति वित्तेनेति अमृतत्वस्य तु नाशास्ति अमृतत्वस्य तु नाशास्ति वित्तेनेति वित्तेनेति नाउ यू कम टू द अन्वय यथा एव एज द उपकरणवतम उपकरणवतम मीन्स दोज हू हैव द उपकरण दैट मीन्स दोज हू हैव एन ऑफ वेल्थ एंड अदर थिंग्स एसोसिएट्स एवरीथिंग जीवित तथा एव ते जीवित सैत योर लाइफ विल बी लाइक दैट ऑफ द पीपल हू ओन अ लॉट ऑफ वेल्थ बिकॉज ही हैड लॉट ऑफ वेल्थ सो आई एम गिविंग यू डिवाइडिंग एंड यू विल हैव लॉट ऑफ वेल्थ फ्रॉम दैट सो द लाइफ विल बी लाइक दैट एज people who live the life with lot of wealth so you can understand my tree whether they are happy or not with the wealth that you have to analyze you have to do the vichara but your life will be like that tu vittena tu but vittena amritatvasya aasha na asti iti aasha means hope but there is no hope of attaining immortality through wealth tu vittena amritatvasya aasha नास्ती नास्ती बाय द बित्ता यू कैन नॉट गेन इमोटलिटी एट ऑल एज नचिकेता टो टोल यमराजा न वित्तेन तर्पणीयो मनुष्यो ही डिड नॉट स्पीक अबाउट इमोटल ही सेट दैट वेल्थ कैन नेवर सैशिएट नेवर सेटिस्फाई ह्यूमन बीइंग हाउ एवर मच यू मे हैव वेल्थ इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू फुलफिल यू वित्त न वित्तेन तर्पणीय मनुष्यो दट फेमस स्टेटमेंट ऑफ नचिकेता आफ्टर द फर्स्ट श्लोका ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णा पूर्णमुद्य पूर्णमुद्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 ओ शाति 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 ओ शाति शाति शाति